Now let's quickly talk about multi-protocol label switching or MPLS. In MPLS we have, let's talk about the terminology for CE at customer edge. That's as a customer, that's what you have. PE is the provider edge. This, these are the routers that are in the administration of the provider, service provider. We don't touch them. We don't know about them. They're completely oblivious to us. The only thing we do know about them is when we get an IP address from our provider to use to over this point to point connection, we have to make sure that we can ping the other side. If we can ping, that means we can get to the PE. That's the only thing we are aware of. And it's a layer three handoff. Like I said, it's a layer three circuit. And typically you would run some sort of routing protocol on top, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now, one thing that I wanna bring to your attention is the fact that we have some semblance of transport independence, whether we have a T1, T3, we have a frame relay or a Metro Ethernet, the handoff doesn't matter. How the circuit is delivered, whether it's a serial circuit or an Ethernet circuit or a TDM circuit, it doesn't really matter to us. MPLS works seamlessly and it's transport independent. So that's another reason why MPLS is so powerful. And MPLS has been around for over 20 years. It's a very, very successful wide area network technology. And what ends up happening is inside the core, here at the edges of the CE, it's all layer three, like I said. But inside the core, these provider edge and provider core devices use labels and using the labels at layer 2.5 or 2.5 of the OSI model, we can cut back on the expensive lookup that we have to do at layer three. At layer two, it's not that expensive for the router to, to, to do the lookup. At layer three, it has to use a lot more resources to do the lookup. At layer 2.5, it's right in between and this is where labels come in these routers use labels to, to transport packets for different customers inside the MPLS cloud. And this is all seamless to you as the end user. You do not know what's happening in the core. All you know is you have a layer three circuit and you're running maybe BGP, for example, as a routing protocol. And that's how you're learning all the routes. But the service provider is using labels PE is also considered an LER or label edge router. And it puts the label on and takes the label off depending on whether it's an inbound packet or an outbound packet. And that's called PHP or penultimate hop popping. Meaning right before the packet is about to leave the MPLS cloud, we pop the label so the router, when the CE gets it, doesn't get confused and the CE does its layer three lookup. Something for you to keep in mind. A couple of benefits of MPLS, like I said, it's transport handoff independent, end-to-end -end QoS. Now the big thing about MPLS is the fact that you get end-to-end -end quality of service. So if I were to go back to the diagram here, you got all these routers, PEs and provider core and provider edges, they have QoS configured on them, quality of service. So they treat your voice and video traffic or real-time traffic differently than your bulk traffic like internet or email. Meaning your bulk traffic could be dropped, but your real-time voice and video cannot be dropped, right? And it also have to have low latency and all that. That's all built in to MPLS. Also, you have a better network topology control. MPLS lets you do point to point, hub and spoke, partial mesh, full mesh, you are fully in control. But the only drawback is you have to work with your service provider to make that happen. You cannot create your own topology. Your service provider has to create the topology for you on their provider edge router. So it's very, very important that you talk to your service provider about that ahead of time. And you have a reliable service with service level agreement, meaning the service provider who sells you an MPLS circuit, it's their job to make sure they meet their service level agreement. Service level agreement contains things like certain amount of latency that they promise that their network will not exceed, certain amount of 
packet loss and jitter and all that is all defined on paper. So when you sign the agreement, you're locked in. And if they violate any of the terms of the agreement, they actually pay you a financial penalty. For example, if your site goes down for longer than it's supposed to, then they will pay you, they, will be, they may give you service for free for that month. So it's really cool from that perspective. And that's MPLS for you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.